Researchers at a trio of universities made and tested an AI chatbot known as DebunkBot that does just that. They found it reduced conspiracy beliefs by an average of 20%, and around 25% of participants rejected their previously held beliefs altogether. Thomas Costello, assistant professor of psychology at American University, led this study and is here to tell us more about it. Tom, good morning. Hey, good morning. So, AI is blamed a lot of times for misinformation, mm -hmm. but you guys created this bot that can help undo that. Right. How, how does it work? Yeah, um, so the idea is someone comes in and they describe a conspiracy belief they hold and also the evidence that they see as supporting it. And that's a really important part of this intervention. A lot of conspiracies, uh, like the evidence uh, that people hold supporting their conspiracy beliefs is just really varied. It, it changes a lot from person to person and that makes a scalable intervention that can use information to combat a whole population set of conspiracy beliefs, just really challenging logistically. So someone comes in, they describe their very specific beliefs, and the AI is able to you know, search across the corpus of information that it has in its training data, identify little bits of facts that are relevant to that person's mm -hmm. beliefs, and then show them to them in the form of a logical argument to try to change their mind. And, and in 20% of the time, they do change people's mm -hmm. beliefs. And it, so most people actually change their beliefs a little bit. People went down on average about 20%, and, and one, in, one in four, so about 25%, as you just said, changed their beliefs completely. So they, they went down to... Is this more effective than a human telling the person that what they think is misinformation? Yeah, so we've, we've actually, we've run a version of that study. It's not published yet, so this is cutting, it's new. But uh, when, when people think they're talking to a human, it works just as well. And I think the same content coming from a human would, would work just as well, too. It's not the fact that it's an AI. It's, it's that the information has been leveraged in, a, in an effective way. I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm not sure I believe that, because people get that information from their family, even if it's the same, but they don't seem to believe it. I know Tony has a ton of questions on this topic, because he's really into AI. Tony? What you got? Yeah, I've got one big one, Thomas. Thanks, mm -hmm. thanks for joining us. Uh, sure. So uh, are you not benefiting at the moment in this research from a certain AI popularity? Uh, people are impressed by it. People believe in it. Are you not one conspiracy theory away from the whole system breaking down? In other <laughs> words, let's say your AI uh, is believed to be controlled by the CIA or the communist government of China right. or the Republican Party or you name it, and the whole thing goes to pieces. How do you combat yeah. that? It almost sounds like a, a conspiracy a little bit, right? That, that an AI has kind of been programmed to change your mind. I don't think that matters. I think, I think people are already pretty skeptical of AI in a lot of cases. And one thing that's nice about debate, back and forth argumentation, is you're able to gauge your opponent's argument on its own merit, rather than you know, the fact that it's a trustworthy source or not. Because these conversations are so in-depth, people are able to use their brain and critical thinking abilities, rather than the fact that like, the AI might be biased or not biased or, or something like that. But, but Thomas, while people can't engage their critical thinking facilities, it, the idea of an AI fact checker does feel to me like a single point of failure uh, when you mm. want redundancy. Because if that AI is in any way compromised or wrong, if it hallucinates, uh, that's your only source. What, do you, what yeah. do you rely on as a backup? Yeah, the, I, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure about a backup. One thing that's nice, right, is, is there are now several different large foundation models from, from, from various sources that uh, you can swap in and out, you can allow the user to choose which one they want to um, use for the conversation depending on their own evaluation of its trustworthiness. I think that, that would be one nice solution. One thing you're kind of already seeing uh, on X, for example, with Grok is people trying to use it to fact check uh, points that they assume it'll support because it's coded as conservative, but Grok ends up saying things that they don't agree with and they're surprised by that. So, so I think this dynamic is already playing out a little bit on social media. So is DebunkBot, which you helped create, is that publicly available right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a website you can go to, debunkbot.com. Basically, you get to see what, um, what, is in, what the participants experienced when going through the intervention. We've had over 100,000 people use it now, and uh, I encourage you to try it out yourself if, if you're curious. All right, there you go. Thomas Costello, thank you so much.